All right, special edition trade deadline. Here we go. We've got about 45 minutes left until 3 o'clock Eastern. Now that's when the deadline hits. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through some of the moves that have happened this morning and how that's going to affect your so rare lineups going forward. Let's run through some of these transactions. All right, well, we're going to start in Detroit. Daniel House, Killian Hayes, both released by Detroit. House acquired via trade this morning from Philadelphia. Hayes just isn't any good, and they're finally giving up on him. Looks like you're going to get more minutes now for Marcus Sasser, who I've been waiting for all year to get some minutes. Played 32 last night. Uh, this guy shoots almost 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90 at the line. These 50, 40, 90 guys are just few and far between, so this is elite NBA shooting. For a rookie, he's decent defensively, at least league average. The only downside to Marcus Sasser is his height. Everything else is there. I can't believe it took him this long to get there, but we've moved Alec Burks out of the way. We've moved Bohan out of the way. Pieces are falling into place for Marcus Sasser. I would be holding on to my Marcus Sassers. He's a 16 right now. I think you're going to get some weeks where he's a value. I would be considering playing him this weekend and moving forward. Uh, Uto Watanabe moved to Memphis. Maybe he gets a little more time in Memphis than he was in Phoenix. The team obviously isn't as good. They're all banged up. This is probably just Luke Kennard insurance at this point. You know, this is a floor spacing three-point shooter. He'd have to see the floor 10 to 15 minutes. Becomes kind of interesting interesting to watch. We'll see how they use him. We've got a swap of backup point guards between Philadelphia and Milwaukee. Pat Bev moves to Milwaukee as they need some defensive help. Cameron Payne goes to Philadelphia. Don't know if Payne will get any floor time in Philadelphia. Maybe a little bit as a backup, probably in that 10 minute range. Beverly, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes probably in Milwaukee. He's there to play some defense, more for leadership and teach defense than anything else. Kind of a coach on the floor at this point in his career. Gives him some toughness too. David Roddy was sent to Phoenix in the Watanabe deal. Seeing Royce O'Neal has been traded. Well, that's interesting. I think Royce O'Neal will get some time in Phoenix. Backup wing player. David Roddy gives them some physicality. We'll see if he gets any minutes. He's kind of an undersized four man, so we'll see how they get him involved. Grant Williams goes to Charlotte. I think he's probably going to play. And they just don't have much on the wings. Dallas just did not want him anymore. Seth Curry to Charlotte. Does he play? I maybe. I think we'll have to wait to see how all this shakes out. PJ Washington goes to Dallas. He's going to play right away. I think he's probably uh, taking Derek Jones minutes. PJ Washington can shoot it a little better, do more things offensively. So he's an interesting pickup for Dallas. I think Dallas really won the trade deadline so far. We'll see what else happens. Joe Harris parting ways with Detroit. It's been waived. He wasn't playing much at all. Just a guy they signed in the offseason and then just didn't use, which is kind of crazy. Dad Young moves to Brooklyn and with Brooklyn moving a couple other pieces out of the way. I think Thad Young continues to get some time. He'll probably get in that 10 to 15 minute range with Brooklyn. We'll see how that shakes out. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I think Dinwiddie really wanted out of Brooklyn for one reason or another. Just wasn't vibing with the team or who knows what was going on. He's in Toronto now and I don't know if he comes off the bench for Toronto. That would be my guess. How many minutes does he get? Dennis Schroeder going to Brooklyn. It's hard to say. I think he's going to play. Obviously, somebody's going to have to fill the Dinwiddie role at point, and they don't have a lot else for ball handlers. I think Dennis Smith and Dennis Schroeder will both play. Probably gets a few more minutes than Smith, maybe in the mid-20s. We'll see how that shakes out. Miles Bridges apparently had a no-trade clause in his contract. He decided to exercise that, so he will not be going anywhere. Mitchich goes to Charlotte. I don't think that's a big deal. We'll see. Maybe he starts playing some more. Charlotte's just such a bad team. I don't know who they're going to throw out there. We'll see. Uh, Malachi Flynn went to Detroit. He may get some backup point minutes. He's a four right now. We'll see what happens. Keep an eye on that one. Fournier goes to Detroit. I Doubt he plays. Bohan going to the Knicks is interesting. He's obviously going to start at least until Randall gets back and then we'll kind of see how he's doing. This guy's just a good outside shooter. I think he's like 41% from three. So interesting pickup for the Knicks as they need some front court help. Rashawn Holmes is going to Washington in a deal that sent Daniel Gafford to the Mavs. This is a great deal for the Mavs. Gafford's been one of the best shot blockers in the league. So they get a rim protector. He obviously can score a little bit, can rebound for you. I think he takes that number one center role away from Derek Lively even when Derek Lively comes back and you'll see them mix and match a little bit but I think Gafford is the big winner here going to a better team with a chance to win Holmes goes to Washington I think he'll play a little bit they're going to use him more than they were using him in Dallas remains to be seen how everything shakes out Quentin Grimes goes to the Pistons in the Bogdanovich deal he'll definitely play for the Pistons once he's healthy kind of a wing shooter he may get more shots he may be a little more active offensively than he was in New York I will see how that works out. 
that could be interesting. Uh, Burks finally gets shipped out of town in Detroit as well. He's headed to the Knicks. They get him back. He was just there a year or two ago. You're going to see some decent games for Alec Burks when he gets hot. He'll be coming off the bench in a sixth-man role, trying to give an offensive spark here and there. Trey Mann going to Charlotte's kind of interesting. So Trey Mann's kind of a come in and get up a bunch of shots kind of guy. And that's kind of the guys you look for in so rare because you're trying to make hay with a, as a few minutes as you need and you have a low l10 right now i think he's a nine or a 10 we'll see if they throw him out there for 25 minutes if they do i think you could have a steal if you have a tray man gordon hayward goes to okc we'll see if uh, he's suddenly healthy i don't expect him to have a huge role offensively on oklahoma city they just have too many talented scorers already try to give them something off the bench he obviously gives them more off the bench than mitchich tray man bertans upgrade Bench-wise for OKC, assuming he can get on the floor. Agbaji goes to Toronto. I wouldn't expect him to have much of a role at all in Toronto. I guess we'll see, but he's just not very good, in my opinion. Really unproductive the minutes he's on the floor. He's been playing about 20 minutes a night. 43% shooter, 33 from three. He doesn't really do anything that well. Yeah, first round pick of the Cavs. He's already been dealt twice. He's only 24, I think, so not great. Olenek going to Toronto. Thought there were better destinations for him. I don't know what his role is going to be in Toronto. They already have Scotty Barnes. They have Quickly, so they don't need another ball handler, distributor type, and that's kind of what Olenek is. I think it's going to be an interesting fit in Toronto. We'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, Marcus Morris and Furkan Korkmaz go to the Pacers. Obviously, uh, anybody going to the Pacers, you're getting in a more up-tempo offense, especially a shooter like Korkmaz. Is he going to play? Don't know. If he can get 10 or 15 minutes, though, maybe valuable for a couple game weeks. Marcus Morris going to Indiana. This one doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm thinking he's going to take over the role of James Johnson. They already have Miles Turner, Jalen Smith, and Isaiah Jackson. Three pretty good big men. Where does Morris fit here? I mean, maybe he's more of a three or a four on this team. I just don't see it. Well, I guess we'll see how it works out. And of course, the return for Philly in that deal was Buddy Heald. I think Buddy Heald immediately steps in and starts playing bigger minutes. I think you might see a better version of Buddy Heald than you've been seeing in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if he can knock down some shots, you're going to get a good play here for a little bit. I think his L10's fallen all the way into the low 20s. Got to keep an eye on in Philly. Man, that should get us up to date for now. Let's just do a quick refresh. All right, got about a half hour left on the deadline. If anything else breaks, I'll put it in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow morning with some updated projections for game week 31 and of course there's a lot of variables in play right now see you tomorrow morning